I was just looking for help from anywhere. I was like, yeah, like our marriage sucks. Like we just fight all the time and we don't have sex and Josh just looks at porn. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, why do I need to pray for him? Like he needs to fix himself first and then we can pray together and live a happy Christian life. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that has been revolutionary in helping our marriage, helping our relationship, and it's kind of like the secret, I think, to life, basically. Uh, but I'm specifically gonna hone in on the topic of marriage. Uh, are going to sit down and film a, basically an unfolding of how our relationship started, the toxic years, some really hard things that we've gone through together and gone through like against each other in and how we got through that stuff. In this video, I want to specifically talk about how prayer changed my marriage. I just wanna give a disclaimer really quick. Those of you who are in an abusive situation, a situation where there's adultery either on your end or your spouse's end, and I would never say that you need to continue to just pray through that situation if you haven't sought help, if you haven't told someone, and if you're feeling unsafe. So please do not think that this video is in any way shaming someone who needs to get out of a bad relationship. This video is for those of you who struggle with selfishness, forgiveness, and moving on from past hurts. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, my husband and I have been together for a very long time since we were 16 and we met in fourth grade. So that just led to us really knowing each other really well really soon in life. So the honeymoon phase like came and went when we were 17. So by the time we got married when we were 20, we knew everything about each other. We'd already had sex with each other for many years prior because we didn't save ourselves for marriage and we just had a lot going against us. And I went against my family's wishes in that I married my husband without them blessing it, really. None of that is condoning anything that I did. I'm just saying how the events went. Since then, God has totally reconciled everyone. Uh, there's been healing on all sides and forgiveness and apologies and all of that. So God can totally redeem a situation like that. But we went through some hell in the early years. I've, I talk about this a lot, mostly because it was a huge chunk of my life uh, that I was addicted to porn from an early age in life. It was introduced to me at age five, and my husband was also addicted to porn from like his preteen years and up. And so we brought a lot of that baggage into our marriage. So I'm just gonna say a lot of these issues hinge on the poor decisions that we made before we were married in that we just gave into our fleshly desires and we didn't listen to the Lord on any of that. So you do reap what you sow. Like if you're gonna sow a bunch of sexual activity before marriage, then good for you if you escaped the hard, difficult years of the repercussions of that, but we did not. We definitely reaped what we sowed. So we reaped a lot of bitterness, a lot of misunderstanding because our relationship was so physical that we didn't really work out anything in our personalities or in our faith or in our maturity. Like we did some premarital counseling, but let me tell you, nothing prepares you for marriage like just going through it. So a lot of this really hinges on my bitterness in our marriage toward my husband because of sexual things. So the main thing was that he was still majorly addicted to porn coming into our marriage. I had a major stipulation before I married Josh. I told him before I married him, like, Josh, if you're totally free from your porn addiction, yes, I want to marry you. Like, let's do it, let's put a ring on it, let's move forward with our life. And so he was like, yes, I'm totally free. Like, we have Triple X Church, which is a website blocker, and I thought we were good. So when I'm walking down the aisle on our wedding day, Josh breaks down in tears and it kind of threw me off. Like, I'm just there like, okay, my family's not at my wedding. A lot of people are here walking down the aisle. I didn't choose the song to come down the aisle, so that distracted me. And I get to the very end and Josh is just bawling his eyes out. And I think part of it was because he thought I was a beautiful bride. 
But I think the other part of it was that he had been lying to me for months. Like, I don't think that. He told me later that he was heartbroken, that he was basically hoodwinking me and just lying to me. And he was still deep into his porn addiction. And he had lied to me. And there I was, blindly trusting him coming down the aisle. Now, that's not to paint a really bad picture of him. We all make mistakes. Now I know what grace is. And I need grace just as much as anybody else. So I'm not painting a bad picture of him in that but I'm just letting you know where this trajectory started. I didn't realize that he was addicted to porn still. So we're into our marriage, we're doing regular sex, you know, the start of a marriage. And, you know, sex wasn't really that special to us because we had been so, uh, we had given in so many times beforehand. So we get a few months into our marriage. I think this is like five or six months in. And I start to find some history on his phone specifically on YouTube, and I see these videos that he had been watching, and I'm like, no way, like I thought he'd beaten this. And so we would go through a cycle of that, like this would happen like once a month, like he'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, yes, uh, I didn't mean to do that, like, uh, and he would just make it apologies, and I, I would move on. But then I started to notice it like get even worse, and one day him and I were watching the Darren Wilson film, like if you know Father of Lights and Finger of God, we were watching uh, Furious Love. And during the Furious Love movie, uh, we both were like super impacted by that and God was really working on us in that season, I think. That night while watching Furious Love, him and I both prayed together and I had a vision and it in the vision, I was looking at a closet and I was taking boxes out of a closet and I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me that he was cleaning house. And so I told Josh that, I was like, yeah, like, wow, like we're praying. And I, God showed me this vision of the Holy Spirit cleaning house. And I said, but there's one box in the closet that the Holy Spirit isn't opening or showing me. He's just showing me the box. I didn't know what it was. Like I was totally naive. I was just like, yeah, what a cool vision. Like, isn't that cool, babe? And then Josh starts crying in that moment and he goes, I need to tell you something. And he told me that he'd still been looking at porn very regularly. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't even tell you what that did to me that night. Like I was so angry. I was so angry. Like the Holy Spirit's so kind in showing that vision and it's all fun and dandy until you realize what he is trying to show you. And it's totally God's grace because God loves Josh and he wants him to be free from porn. And God loves me and he wants the wife to know as the helper to help him. But I'm just telling you, like I was not ready in that moment for that confession. And that's when he told me that when I walked down the aisle, the reason why he was crying was because he knew he was lying to me and that I was marrying him in blind faith. And so that just totally wrecked me. And at this point, we're a year into our marriage and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this whole year has been a lie. I married a loser who can't control himself. What was I thinking? I turned my back on my family for this guy and my whole life is ruined. And basically we ended in a very big, hurtful argument. I can't remember all the details, but Josh went to bed. It was totally the attack of the enemy. And I'm telling you, the enemy hates marriage. I didn't see that clearly at the time. At the time, I just took it extremely personal. Okay, so that is the backstory to what I wanna get into about prayer. And I'm gonna give another little personal testimony just because I believe the way that God works is so amazing. Like there is no coincidence. There are no accidents in his kingdom. There's no coincidence that you met a certain person. There's no coincidence that you're watching this video. Like I'm telling you, he works in all things. Like the perfection that I thought that it was, the love that I thought that I felt was all superficial at this point because I only love Josh if he loved me back. I only love Josh if he was clean from porn and if he, it's almost like ignorance was bliss. I only loved him if I was ignorant. But now I was awakened that I had to love a sinner. I had to love someone who hurt me very, very deeply. And he had to love me because I was about to become a total B in this marriage. Like I am appalled at the way that I treated him over the next two years because my goodness, it was some years of some toxic, dark, 
hard times, you guys. And I can say that with a smile on my face right now, but I'm telling you, at the time, it was no freaking joke. I mean, it was hard. God heals, that's this testimony. God heals over time. Give it some time and prayer and healing because it's gonna take a while to regain trust. Oh, that next morning, I told Josh that I forgave him, but I didn't. I did not forgive him. I said it with my mouth, but not with my heart. And from that point, a bitterness, a root of bitterness took root in my heart. And I, from that point, from that point and two years onward, I don't think it was uprooted until maybe just like a year and a half ago. And we're almost six years into our marriage. So at that time, we were living in a town where there was not a healthy church culture. It was a very small town. There was no one to go to with these issues that could really hash, hash through them with us. We didn't really have anyone to talk to. So at that time, just out of desperation, I pressed into God so hard. I was like, Lord, I can't do this. Like my family doesn't even talk to me because I chose this boy over them. And my husband, oh, I threw my pen, sorry. My husband doesn't even care about me. He doesn't even love me. He doesn't even want to have sex with me. He only wants to look at porn and other women. And my body doesn't look like that. I just started to go on a downward spiral. I remember being at work during the day and just holding back tears or going into the vault because I worked at a bank and I would just cry in the vault. I would try to open up to other girls at work about it because I didn't have a church home really. And all of them would just say that they never struggled with it or that they just didn't care that their husband looked at it. I remember talking to, I texted some women from my previous church in Texas and I was like, please help me. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm hurting so bad. And they also said, sorry, honey, we don't struggle with that. Even though I know that's such a lie, such a lie, but it was taboo at the time more than it is now. This was like six years ago, but at the time there was no help to be found. So then I just started praying like, God, I need help. Like I need friends. I need someone like just send anyone someone anyone i remember we came to texas to go to a lake house with some people and at this lake house we met the answer to our prayers uh we met a couple that were in their 40s and i want to cry just thinking about it because if we hadn't have met them i honestly don't know where we'd be they have become our mentors and friends and just people who we can go to with anything at this lake house i didn't know that like they were just people that we were boating with and it was fun from that point we started texting them i don't even know how it happened y'all but at some point we started driving to texas to come visit them more often and that's when we opened up about our struggles with our marriage with them and they came alongside us in such a strong way. Oh my gosh, if it weren't for them. So I'm gonna kind of let that story hang off right now because I wanna talk about it in another video, but God seriously did some incredible things through that couple. And I'm gonna fast forward to our first trip to Africa. So on this first trip to Africa, I'm sitting at a table in Dubai because uh, we had a layover in Dubai. This is at the very end of the trip. And at this point, that root of bitterness had been there for like two years. So I had grown accustomed to belittling Josh at this point. Like I would tell him like, you don't deserve my trust. You will never earn my trust. You have no self-control. So the whole wives submit to your husbands and respect your husbands. I wasn't doing that, y'all. I was belittling him, tearing him down on a daily basis to the point to where he even would say like, I don't even wanna come home, like what's the point? And I'd be like, yeah, I don't want you to come home, like go away. On our last day, on the way home in Dubai, we're on our layover, we're sitting at a restaurant at the Dubai Mall and I just, was probably spouting off something about Josh. I don't even remember what it was. It was just like, oh yeah, Josh is so dumb or Josh is so not good at this or not good at that. And Dustin, our mentor, he had his hands on the table and he just kind of looks down and he goes, you know, a wise woman builds her house up, but a foolish woman tears it down. And he looked me right in the eye when he said that. And I couldn't believe that he said it. Like, I was just kind of like, okay, like, rude can't believe you said that to me jerk i mean i didn't say that to him but i just kind of like quietly was like oh yeah okay and i think we just ate our pizza and i don't know flew back home 
and we were jet lagged and I was pissed. Like, I remember thinking about that the whole 16 hour flight back to the US. I just couldn't believe that he said that to me. Like, how could you say that? Like, you're calling me a fool, okay. But then like two weeks later, after some more bitterness and toxic times with Josh probably, uh, it just sunk in. Like the Holy Spirit used that and brought it to my remembrance and I looked it up. It is Proverbs, Proverbs 14, 1. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. And God just showed me at that time that I was tearing my house down. I was tearing my marriage and my husband apart. And before you start to think, well, no, your husband was the one tearing it apart because he was looking at porn. Like, yes, he had his part, believe me, but I can't control him. I can't control what he does. I am responsible for me and who I am before God. I don't have to answer for Josh. Josh has to answer for Josh. And so I just want to tell you ladies right now that if your husband is unkind, if he is doing things that are not okay, if he's not there to support, if he's not there to help with the kids, if he's being extremely selfish, if he is being like that in any way, I just want to tell you that he has to answer for that. You don't have to. So the thing that you have to answer for is being the helper. Like that's what marriage is. The world might want to think that marriage is like a equal sharing thing where I'm kind of like a guy and a girl and he's kind of like a guy and a girl. Like, no, I'm a woman. Josh is a man. God brought us together. We are there to come alongside our husband and to submit. And as I heard on a talk show called Better Together, like submission, submit is to like come under his mission. And a lot of you might be thinking, well, how can I submit to a man who doesn't even have a vision, who doesn't know what the heck he's doing, who is only focusing on himself? How could I submit to a man who doesn't submit himself to God? I'm gonna tell you right now, I totally understand what you're saying, but I'm also gonna say that that is going to be one of the biggest things that holds you back from breakthrough. So if you're just waiting for him to change so that you can change or enjoy your life, good luck, because you're gonna be waiting for a while. So the secret or the way to get through all of this is prayer. Like I'm not gonna make it all fancy and like announce it in some extravagant way. It's prayer, you have to pray. I wasn't praying for Josh, like the bitterness had grown. I was really just relying on our mentors to slap Josh's hand and reset him each time, but Josh would keep going back to the addiction and we would just keep going back to our mentors for help. And he would say that he wanted to change, he would read the Bible, we would pray, we'd go to church, we'd do all these things. We would even lead worship, we would, we would do all the things, but that doesn't change hearts. The Holy Spirit changes hearts and prayer. Like the Creator can change a heart. Um, we, I, wives, you cannot change your husband's heart. Uh, there was a time where I didn't believe in this. Like I was like, why would I pray for him? He doesn't pray for me. He doesn't do anything for me. He doesn't even think about me. All he thinks about is himself. Like we literally are like strangers to each other. Um, it's, it's toxic. Why would I, why do I have to be the one? But then there was like a series of instances that God just pushed me into. And I had had it in my head that Dustin was like perfect. Like I was like, okay, he conquered this thing so it can be conquered. Like Josh needs to conquer it because Dustin conquered it. And if he hangs out with Dustin, then he's going to conquer it and my life will be better then. And Dustin goes, you know, Sydney, I struggle with that stuff. Like I'm not perfect either. And that's when like my whole, like I was like, like what? Like, you struggle with it? And he was like, do not put me on a pedestal. Yes, I struggle with this stuff, so what are you gonna do? Like, basically telling me like, let me shatter this idea of perfection that you have that you're trying to hold Josh to. But through God's grace, it will. And if you'll stop tearing him down and give him a chance, maybe you guys can grow in this thing. After Josh, like Josh had gone to the bathroom, he was like, yeah, I was talking to Tracy the other night and we were praying for you guys and I just said, man, I wish Sydney would just give Josh a hug. And when he said that, I got so mad because I'm just like, what? Like, Josh doesn't hug me ever. In fact, he probably should because he, like, my husband doesn't pursue me. He doesn't look for affection from me. And my love language is physical touch, not Josh's. Like, Josh's isn't physical touch. His is acts of service. He just wants me to clean and cook for him. 
the Holy Spirit once again used his words and showed me that Josh was extremely broken and sad and lonely. He had a hard childhood and a lot of stuff goes into that. The Holy Spirit just showed me that Josh was hurting. Like he goes to porn out of brokenness and hurt as like a place to go to for comfort and it doesn't comfort him. Like if anything, it just makes him feel worse. Like the devil keeps him in this horrible cycle to where he feels even more empty after performing the act. At that moment, God showed me that for the first time that Josh was his son first and I was his wife second. I'll tell you more about that later because I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Like God really convicted me to treat his son like a prince or like a king um, and stop treating him like a horrible piece of crap. And I really think that the culture of like uh, romantic comedies and like the hookup type script writing that's in Netflix series and like the really romantic crap and like multiple partners it does no one any favors. It's like you think marriage is a pinnacle, will somehow just meet all of your needs, and it's it's not gonna meet all of your needs. Like, you still need God first. So if you make an idol out of your husband, he's gonna fail you, and I had done that with Josh. He failed me over and over and over again because I was looking for love from a father, and I needed to get that from the Lord, not from my husband. Then there was another point when I was complaining to my mom and my aunt about the stuff that I was going through, I was just looking for help from anywhere. I was like, yeah, like our marriage sucks. Like we just fight all the time and we don't have sex. And Josh just looks at porn. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I was really down about it. I was crying all the freaking time. And that's when my mom gave me the book, The Power of a Praying Wife. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, why do I need to pray for him? Like he needs to fix himself first and then we can pray together and live a happy Christian life. I'm telling you, like it sounds ridiculous right now, but I'm not kidding. Like I know so many of us think that way. Like we think I'll do it when he does it right. I'll start to press in when he starts to press in. So I got that book from my mom. And I remember one night I was just super broken and so pissed and at the end of my rope that I picked it up and I just started to read it and I was like, okay, what, I mean, I'm so broken that why not? Why not just pray and cry out? So I did. I started praying for Josh that day. There were more times. We would repeat the cycle, I tell you, over and over again. It would be like, Josh, have you looked at anything? And he'd be like, yes. And then I would be upset. I would say I forgave him, but I didn't really forgive him. So then I would just drive the wedge in deeper. So then Josh would start to lie more because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. But then we would confess again, and then we would talk to Dustin and Tracy, and then we would pray with each other, and then we would have a good little week, and we would be active in our sex life, but then we, he would go back to it, and it was just a vicious cycle. I tell you, we have repeated the cycle more times than I can even tell you. But I did still continue to pray. And then one of the last messages I got that kind of solidified the, the fact that I needed to start praying for Josh and continue to pray for him earnestly was I was sitting in this actual house, actually, like three years ago. This house was rented by our friends and they passed the lease on to us. Uh, I was sitting right over there in, our living, in this living room and a woman named Veronica, I was complaining to the women there. Like I was just always looking for someone to pat me on the back for being an amazing wife and having such a crappy husband, but that never happened. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that no one ever like said, oh yeah, he's horrible, you should leave him because that's not what needed to happen. What needed to happen was I needed to learn how to forgive 70 times seven and have grace for someone else and stop thinking I was better than him. And I needed to humble myself and pray, thank God that he sent me all these people. So Veronica said, you know, you need to really stop talking that way about your husband. Like he's your husband, you married him. Uh, you need to respect him and love him and you need to pray for him. And I was pretty pissed once again, like just this prideful person who just kept getting angry at all these people telling me the same thing. But I'm pretty sure God was just trying to get through my hard headedness and my pride. And when she said that I was angry, but then I messaged her a week later and said, I'm sorry that I kind of reacted in a way that wasn't receptive, but you're right. It's almost like I'm grateful that I didn't get a perfect good husband who like brings me chocolate and flowers and dotes on me all the time because I would have really idolized my relationship because I was the kind of girl who needed that. But God didn't give that to me and I'm grateful.
sweet baby. But yeah, so I'm glad that I didn't have that. Like, it's so hard for me to say that now because there has been such pain in our marriage. But now I view all of these lessons and these hard times as a gift almost because it truly gave me something that is irreplaceable. It showed me how to have grace and how to forgive people. And so oftentimes I was wrong. I was wrong in being prideful and withholding my forgiveness and withholding sex and withholding affection. I was wrong in all of that. And I am so grateful that I learned what grace was because I started to realize like, wow, I'm pretty scary Like when I lose it and when I act out of anger. Um, I can't believe some of the things I've said and done in anger. And I realized, like, wow, like, I need grace. Like, I need God to forgive me for that. And that's when I started to realize, like, okay, yeah, I'm not perfect. And Josh isn't perfect either. And so I'm not going to let you know that there's, like, one formula or trick to stop your husband from looking at porn and to start loving you unconditionally. But I will say, without God, it's nearly impossible. And I think marriage is designed to fail or to be very, like, self-focused without God in the center of it. And you can believe what you will. I have found that to be true. I've watched marriages fall apart around us that uh, did not put God at the center, that they put each other at the center, and each other and the people failed each other. So they therefore walked away, and they're on to find perfection with some other person that they're not going to find it with because it's in... It's empty. So yeah, if you're in a place that's healthy, then man, that is awesome. I'm so happy for you. But I would also encourage you to pray for your husband and pray for your marriage, pray for your children, whatever. Prayer is important and I did not realize how much it can do. I didn't realize how much like preventative things it can do. Like if you just pray that um, your husband's eyes would be averted whenever someone with lustful clothing walks by, if you would just pray for his strength and for his endurance in the world, that he would be encouraged in his place of employment, that he would um, seek the Lord, that he would honor God with his finances and honor God with loving you and ask for help for you to love your husband. Like if you would just pray these things, you would be shocked at how like peaceful things are because you're praying against the enemy's plans. We pray together every night now, which is something that we instated together. Uh, if you know Craig Groeschel, he has a little policy that he says, make it short, make it consistent. And that's really stuck with me. So Josh and I, we try to make it short, but it's not always short because once you start praying together, you start really growing more together and you want to pray bigger things. And uh, guys, it all started years ago. Like. <laughs> If, you're, if you made it to the end of this video, good for you, because I'm telling you, like this was the messy, broken process that it took to get to this point. And so yeah, if you made it to this point, just know it wasn't like one day I woke up and started praying and everything got better. No, this was years and years and years of forgiveness and growing and faith and praying and more forgiveness and love and praying for mentors and guidance and certain sermons would call us out and worship songs and trips to Africa. There were just so many ways that God worked through everything and then we're here now and I, we're not perfect by any means but we have learned to fight well and to fight for each other instead of fighting against each other which has been huge and if I hadn't started praying all those years ago I do not think we would be here. I mean I have prayer journals from years ago with very specific prayers that are being answered like just now. Like um, Josh is starting to wet his feet in ministry and starting to speak in certain places. And those were things that I prayed years ago with no promise of them ever showing up because he was not even into that. Like he didn't even believe the Bible was really the word of God. So we've come a long, 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 long way. And that's our story. But I'm telling you, the one-size-fits-all answer for problems in life is talking to your God, talking to your Creator. He can work anything out, and He's working things out even when we're not praying. He's that good. Basically, you just need to pray. You need to sit down and pray. You need to open your mouth and talk to the unseen God, and He will answer you. He will. He's faithful. So if you're in a place that is good, then that's awesome. Pray. If you're in a place that's not so great, sister, I feel you. 
oh, it's hard. It's so hard when you're in that broken place and you're bitter and you don't think that you should be doing anything to help the situation because they're the ones who are hurting the situation. But I'm telling you, you have a major role in this if you will just humble yourself and if you will just pray. Start with prayer and the rest will follow. Um, God will really change your heart. You'll realize that your husband's just broken. He's just hurting. Uh, if he's super selfish, it's because he feels like he has to take things for himself because he doesn't know who he is in Christ. Pray for your husbands. Pray for your husbands. Regardless if he's treating you the way you want to be treated, regardless if he's praying for you, regardless if you feel it, like you're not going to feel it. Like you just need to do it and um, things will change, I promise you. Just take a chance on it. I guess a cloud came over because it got a little dark. Have a great time of the day, whatever time of day it is for you, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!